What's up, what's up, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to TD Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. We are live on this amazing Thursday, May the 7th, 2020. Welcome, 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 everybody. Shout out to everybody that's been hanging out in the comment section waiting on us. We're about to have a great show for you all. The NFC, the NFL schedule has been released. We have a lot of great information on UDFAs, undrafted free agents. And we're going to hit a lot of that stuff today. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the NFL schedule for the Miami Dolphins. Man, a lot of happy, a lot of tough. We're going we to dive into it. We're definitely going to dive into it. We're going to talk into it, talk about it. I'm going to give about 30 seconds for people to come into the room. Want to make sure YouTube gave the notifications. What's up, everybody? Put your fins up in the comment section. Make sure y'all here with us. What's going on, everybody? Let me see this. Can everybody hear me right now? Let me know in the comment section if you can hear me right now. Make sure we all good. Mm. No confirmation yet. Okay, yes, we got the yeses, so you all can hear me. So this is TD Fins Talk Thursday Night Details with none other than the homie himself, the Don Dada, the maestro, Mr. Dwayne. What's up, man? <laughs> What's going on, TD? Go Dolphins, yeah! baby. Let's go Dolphins, baby. Go hey, Dwayne. Dwayne, we got the schedule, man. Yo, we got, we the, got schedule. the schedule that, that shows us the path to our glory, baby. Super Bowl, baby. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. I, I'm pumped, Dwayne, man. I've already saw the schedule. We're about to talk about it. I'm not going to sit here in front of that like it's the easiest thing ever, but I, I do see the schedule. We're going to talk about it, man. Have you seen it yet? I have not seen it yet. I saw – I looked over the comment. I saw that we start with New England. Mm. So I'm like – that's fine. Let's get them good early. Let's put a spanking on them early. It's getting real, Dwayne, man. <laughs> I'm going to just put it like that. This NFL schedule is getting real. Matter of fact, I want everybody to see it with me at the same time um, so that we can view it together, all right? We're going to view it together. I'm going to put it up on the screen for everyone to see. Y'all bear with me one second so I can take care of y'all. All right, let me bring this over. All right, here we go. Let me put this up on the screen, and I'm going to share it so everybody can see. Can I, Hopefully, everybody can see this, all right? Hopefully, Ooh. everybody can see this. So this is the Miami Dolphins 2020 schedule, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 2020 schedule. It's about to go down, man. Um, I'm excited about it. Let me go ahead and go full view mode. All right. So first and foremost, we got preseason. If we remain, if we maintain the preseason, let's go ahead and get that out the way. Okay. Now we know last year Atlanta came to us. So it's like a return, return to favor game. We got to go to Atlanta. Okay. Um, so the first game is at Atlanta. Again, we don't know the dates for preseason yet because you know how they stretch those out. But I like that being the first preseason game. Go ahead and um, because Atlanta's always a team that gives you good quality competition so you can gauge the players on the team. What you think about that one, Dwayne? I think that's a valid point. And also, also the fact that it gets the the rookies and the UDFAs used to Travel. traveling. Yes. And it's a short trip, so whatever mistakes they make, they can be corrected, and it's not going to have such a big impact. Absolutely, man. And then then how about game two at home versus the Eagles? Now, I think that the Eagles – see, this is why I like this game too. You think the Eagles happy about what happened last year when they came to Miami? Oh, no, they're not. And guess what? This is also going to provide a good test for the offensive line because yes. the Eagles do like to bring pressure, and this is going to be a, a good test, and it's week two. It's going to be able to determine who's going to be starting, your starting mm -hmm. offensive lineman as well. So this 
is a good opportunity for the coaches and the coaching staff to see exactly what they're dealing with. Exactly. And I can't wait, man. I think that's going to be a good one. Just competition. That's what you want in preseason. You want competition. And I like that that's going to be at home because who knows? I might actually be to that game. I might actually go down to that game. Eagles at home. Yeah. It's likely I'll be there for preseason. Then we stay at home and we play the Lions. What you think about that one? Well, at the very least, the wide receivers should get a good test between uh, uh, facing Akuda. Uh, it'll be a, it'll be a good way to gauge his 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 needs, his development, but also put a test to our wide receiving core and see by then whether or not Preston Williams and Devontae Parker are on pace to be able to perform the way they performed in 2019. I'm glad you say that, and that's huge to me because the third preseason game is typically the last preseason game that the starters play. Yep. And they're going to be going hard in the first quarter. Yes. They're going to yes, be indeed. going pretty hard in the first quarter. So if that's the case, if that's the case, this is going to be a good matchup, like you said, in the receiving core. And I hope that's what it ends up being, man. If that's what it ends up being, that's going to be amazing. Um, just to see that we get to look at the secondary, how they react as far as the Lions. Can our receiving core, because I'm going to be honest with you, the questions that we have are at safety. And honestly, you have questions at receiver. Is Preston Williams going to return? Is Albert Wilson back to form? You know, he came on late last season, but is that carrying on to this season? Um, you know, it's who's Parker. shining? And whether or not Devontae Parker is going to maintain what he established last year and yeah. whether uh, Jakeem Grant can can uh, reestablish himself. Mm, yeah, this is a big exactly. Game. Plus, it's, a, it's the ability to be able to see two of Belichick's uh, protégés face off against each other. Uh, mm. The fact that we don't play, we, we play the, the, the Jaguars in the regular season is one of the reasons why we're not playing them during the preseason, which I think is, is good because you don't want to, you don't want to play a team in the, in the preseason and then play them again in the regular season. So exactly, man, they, they mixed it up a little bit, put some, Added some variety to the to the preseason schedule this year because usually it's Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Jacksonville, and and New Orleans just to keep it a regional regional cut down on the travel time. But yes. the fact that we got the Eagles and the Lions that that provides a variety and uh, you know, like I said, gives gives the the wide receivers a chance to challenge themselves against a good defensive secondary and also mm -hmm. the offensive lineman in the second game, a, a good challenge as well. Now, now, now this saints, this saints preseason game though, I'm not, a, it's whatever it's get, first of all, it's preseason game four, but this is when your UDFAs and all those guys, cause we're going to be talking about UDFAs later in the show, but this is when your UDFAs and a lot of those guys, they get to show out, but again, it's not like it's gonna get be against first unit players. So what do I mean? Is this does the Saints game mean anything? It's gonna mean something to players like Equivon, it's gonna mm -hmm. mean something to players mm -hmm. like Avery Moss, it's gonna mm -hmm. mean something to players like uh Malcolm Perry, it's gonna mean something to players like Kurt Merritt, it's gonna mean something to players like um Jonathan Hubbard is going to mean something to players that uh, like Patrick Laird, who are all either fighting to take somebody's food or mm -hmm. fighting to prevent somebody from taking their food out their mouth. <laughs> so week four, even though it's not not a a time for the starters, it is a time to give the the coaching staff that last. Uh, shine that last you know what coach i am the better player i am the one that's mm -hmm. going to be on that that should be on the 55 53 man roster i am that one who should rather than be put on the practice squad 
be on the active roster. Okay. And for those who, who may not end up on the team, it still is a valid opportunity for them to showcase their wares to other teams. So every player should be taking every opportunity to showcase their talents and skills because it's whether it's with the Dolphins or with another NFL team, you show lackadaisical tape, you show carefree attitude, that's going to reflect on your opportunities going forward, whether it's with the Dolphins or with another team. I agree, but Dwayne, man, I have to pause for a second here because that orange jersey is fire. Who is that, man? Oh, this this is Larry Little, baby. Larry Ooh, Little. Larry that's Little, little that's baby. Man, that, that thing's sweet, man. Oh, man. Hey, listen, I might, I might have to hold you up one day, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It's All my right. size. It's only my size, baby. Hey, I'll make it fit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? I'm actually smiling right now. I'm excited, and let me tell you why. Because we done got preseason out the way. It's time to talk. You know what? Before we talk about the regular schedule, please let us know in the comment section right now. Let us know in the comment section what is our preseason record. I know some people don't care, but give me the preseason record. What do you think we go in those four games? Give me your prediction on the preseason record. We're going to give you about 15 seconds, guys. Preseason record prediction, baby. Hey, y'all better get it right. This is a test. It's only one answer to this. It's only one answer to this, all right? Let's get it right. Let's get it right. It's only one answer. One. Four and oh, baby. I don't want to hear all that ridiculousness. Three and one, two and two. <laughs> ah, four and oh, baby. We, hey, we ain't losing the game this season. We about to get into it, man. I'm pumped, man. We got the schedule, Dwayne. All right, so let's go ahead and pass free season up, all right? All right. Pass free season. All right. So, oh, my God. See, the NFL says first game of the season. First game of the season. Hello, New England and Miami. That's right. What's up, guys? That's right. You're they ready? Play. You're ready to battle it out in the first game of the season in Foxborough? Talk to me about that before I get my take, Dwayne. Stidham is going to have to face the heat and humidity right out the box. The heat in the, in the stadium is going to be more heat for Stidham. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're at New England. Oh, even Ooh, better. Even yeah, better to me it's better what? too, but go ahead. Even better because guess what? We get to go up there without having to deal with a lot of the elements. Yes. We go up there. We already we just came from beating them up there. And guess what? We're going to reestablish and reemphasize that point of confidence and dominance over the Patriots. First thing out the box, put up 0 and 1 on Belichick's schedule on Belichick's standings and start off right. Start off right. That's what I, I believe is gonna happen. Listen, man. I was reading. I, it, I was reading it I, wrong. No, you're good, man. Listen. First of all, this is the first time in a long time because the NFL actually p i s s e s me off every year. It pisses me off every year. Okay. Yep. They make me mad every year. Either we go into New England late in the season. Like, literally, they've had sometimes where we play New England in week 13 and we play them again in week 16 or something. Like, they always got to give us the cold, frigid element. And this is one of the few years where they have to come. I mean, we have to go up there, and it shouldn't be. It's not going to be crazy cold. And it's not going to be cold. And the fact that they're not going to be so used and and used to having Stidham as their leader. And the first time that he comes upon some stress, he may turn into a piece of coal rather than a diamond. Man, this is the game for Miami to win. And I have us winning this game because I told y'all, depending on what the schedule is, if New England, if we go to New England early in the season, it's a W. You got a fresh quarterback in New England. Let me say that again. You got a fresh freaking quarterback in New England. First game of the season. You don't have the weather on your side. And Miami is coming in. 
W. Let me know in the comment section what y'all think about the win loss in that game. Is it a W or a loss? Let me know now. What's your thoughts on that, Dwayne? What's your prediction? I'm telling you, it's a W right now. I don't even have to worry about it. It's a W because I, I gotta keep tabbing, confident. Right? I gotta get my little notepad. The confidence that the Dolphins have of already beating them previously, so late in the last game of the season, is gonna provide confidence for this for the Dolphins to go up there and do it one more time. Do it again. Woo! Let's do it again, baby. Sydney Poitier and Bill Cosby. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Hey, listen. Listen, man. If you don't have the Miami Dolphins with a W going into New England week one with their first crack at a new quarterback, I know. Listen, their first crack at Now, all the headlines are saying Tua Tagovailoa versus Stidham in game one. But again, who I don't know if he's starting. But whatever. Game one, man, we're about to – guys, we're starting the season one and oh. You and can even, take if Tua, even if Tua does start, do you really think that they're going to want to let a rookie, another rookie quarterback or a rookie starter, <laughs> rookie starter bring down Tua's first game? That defense is going to be hype. He's already <laughs> establishing the leadership qualities to format – Format a team bonding by calling everybody up as soon as he got drafted. So they're gonna want to play for him. They're gonna want to win for him as well. So I, I think that that's a W. Listen, Dwayne, you don't even understand how pumped I am right now, man. You don't even understand how pumped I, I, I feel like the season starts next week, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we want. We want to see it. We want it to happen. Because Patriots we, we game one all the pieces in place. Oh my yeah. gosh, I want to see that our defense crash to them. Let him know he ain't even in the top half for the quarterback totem pole in the AFC East. I mean, and, and besides, you think about it who does New England have offensively? They got what James White? He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> broadcast fears in people's heart. Sony Michelle again. He's a good player, but he doesn't he doesn't threaten the, the stretch the field for 40, 50 yards at a time. Mm. Nikhil Harris, until he does it, I don't believe he can do it. Mm. Okay. And then you got stood up and they don't have any tight ends that I could think of right at the moment. <laughs> so where's his where's his offensive power that's gonna be able to defeat the defensive juggernaut that the Dolphins are establishing? Oh my gosh, can we start tomorrow? <laughs> hey, Jazza 803 with the donation said week nine at Cardinals. Rosen get his revenge. We gonna get to week nine, but it's so many storylines that can play out. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Man, enough about the Patriots because that's a W. I don't care if you what y'all think. Listen, TD said it's a W, it's gonna be a W. We starting the season one and oh, ladies and gentlemen. We starting the season, we starting the season three and oh. Three and hey, hold, on. hold on, Dwayne. Don't jump too fast. You three and oh. some of, you trying to take away some of my joy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so week number two, we get to come back home on a high. We're excited. First of all, week number one, when we get that victory, what's even bigger about it is it's against a division foe. We're already number one in the AFC probably at that point. We're already number one in the AFC East when we beat the Patriots, all right? And then we get that way. What's that? And going to continue that way. Absolutely, because week two, we get to come back home saying we took the Patriots down. They are irrelevant in the AFC East now. We are the new dogs, but we got to make sure that we prove to these fakers – these these bums that think that they up and coming, that is real. They got to come down to Miami. They got to come down here in the heat of the heat of all heats of the sun that will be beaming on the visitor side. And they got to sit there, Buffalo Bills, and come to Miami in that heat and play against us in week two. Let me tell you something. First of all, that's going to be one of the biggest home openers ever. 
especially when we beat New England in week one. Because winning two divisional games, beating the Patriots, and then having to play the Bills in our home opener, that is going to be one of the biggest home openers ever. Matter, matter of fact, I got to sit down with my wife tonight, and we got to say, hey, week two, because they're only allowing about 15,000 fans in the stadium, we need to call Miami tomorrow, see what we need to do to get our opening, opening game tickets. Because Buffalo game is going to be massive. It's going to be massive. And because they think that Buffalo is going to take over the AFC East, and that is our opportunity to make a stand and say, we here, baby. What you think, Dwayne? That crowd's going to be hyped. It's going to be so hyped. And only 15,000. I mean, you should have. They, they should have at least split with Buffalo last year. Mm -hmm. They had a chance to split at the very least. And to get them home first – and establish themselves as the as the dominant team in the division, a chance to do that, that crowd is going to be so hyped coming off of that first win that even, even Dolphin Denny is going to be hyped up. Man, listen, listen, Dwayne. Miles Johnson is in the comment section talking about be real for once, TD. Hot or not, the Bills are still going to win. Listen, Miles, I'm going to try my best to say this calmly so i don't so people don't go all on twitter and say td talk to us like we children that's why i unsubscribe because i get that all the time but listen i don't care what you got to say about buffalo talk about be honest for once td this is what td truly and honestly believes we are gonna toast buffalo in week two we gonna take care of the patriots then we gonna toast buffalo in week two where is your faith Ye, oh, ye of little faith. Have some faith in your team. You at freaking home. You at home. If you can't defend home, if you don't have optimism about home, then what are we talking about here? It's the freaking Miami Dolphins. A new era, new coach, new personnel. It's time for us to win. And we going to freaking win, man. We going to beat Buffalo and we going to win against New England on the road. I ain't entertaining y'all today about that crap. <laughs> TD this and that. TD that and this. We finna win, man. It's to man. Y'all, that's why I can't the season start tomorrow. Y'all don't understand how pumped I am. You don't understand how pumped I am. Man, get out of here with that crazy crap. That, oh, be real for once, TD. I'm being real. Because when we win that game, I ain't going to hear from you. I ain't going to hear from you. So come on, man. Have some optimism. Even if we were to lose, have some optimism. You're at home, bro. I mean, you don't have no dignity in yourself, so the Bills going to sweep us this year? Come on, man. That means you don't believe in what we're building. You don't believe in what would the moves that we've already made. In other words, you're an individual who feels like the moves we made won't matter because we suck anyway. Then what you doing? What you here for? What are you, you gotta have about? Faith. You got that's why you fans because you root for you root for your team. And what's the the word fan is short for fanatic. So now you gotta have that that kind of belief system yes. that your team is gonna win no matter what the odds are. And this year, the odds are pretty doggone good that the Dolphins Let's can go. win that game at home against Buffalo. It's early in the season, first of all. Teams gotta get acclimated, and now now we also have to get in the rhythm. But it's early in the season. It's at home against a division rival. If we can't have faith about a division rival at home, then gosh, man. Gosh, come on. Come on, man. Work with me here. Shout and, out to a little lot. And, and, and guess what else? You gotta remember, there's some there, there, there's something that's gonna be that's gonna be providing some extra motivation this year. The fact that they're gonna be in some way, shape, or form, wanting to, to put this, dedicate this season for Shula, who used to dominate Buffalo, used to dominate the Patriots, used to dominate the Jets, and dominate the Colts for eight, ten years. So, believe me, they're going to want to come out strong and play long for the Buffalo Bills. Man, listen, y'all. Listen, man. Shout out to Lil Lauderdale with the donation. Said no matter if we lose or win, I'm Miami forever. I'm I'm forever That's a Miami man. Dolphins. That's fan. good. That's it. absolutely. But let me let me let me say this to y'all, man. 
there's power in, in, in the tongue. Have some faith with TD. If you don't agree with me or care about what I say or anything, let's have some faith this year. Let, let's, let's, let's put that positive aura into the atmosphere for our team. And I personally feel like that's the least we could do as fans. Support our team with positive aura. Just positivity. Because you know what? You might look up and be shocked. Don't discount the fact that we could be shocked and proud of something. For once in a long time, we could be proud, man. And I'm going to have that optimism. So I don't mind y'all not having optimism. So the person that I was just talking to, I don't mind what you said, but don't come at me and say, be real for once, TD. That's when you cross the line. You trying to change how I feel. That ain't going to happen, homie. Fins up, man. Fins up. Not going to happen. You know, Shout out to Russell Boris with the donation saying 12 4, 6 and 0 in the division for shooter. There you go, Russell. That's what I'm talking about. See, you got to think it before it becomes reality. You got to think success in order to have success. Russell, the homie, man. Let's go, Russell. Let's go, Russell. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Man, Lil Lauderdale backed it up with without faith, what do we have? Exactly. That's all I'm saying, Lil Lauderdale. I mean, what you want us to do? Uh, you know, I'm looking at the schedule, guys, and it looks like we're going to go 2-14. and 14. I'm excited about the Bengals game, and I'm also excited about the, uh, I don't know what, the Jaguars game. We're going to win those two games. Get excited, guys. Oh, and guess what? We're going to win the bye, too. No, I don't live like that. I don't live like that. I got faith my team going 16-0, and 0, baby. And even if we don't, it's fins up forever. Shout out to everybody who's hitting that like button in the comment section. 291 people here, 101 likes. Punch that like button, guys. Show your love and support, man. Let's move forward because we got two divisional wins. We open the season in two divisional win. But before we move forward, I want to say this too. Could you imagine starting the season with two divisional wins against the Patriots and Buffalo? Be in the driver's seat, already establishing. Already in the, the driver's seat. That we are in the driver's seat in the division. And then on top of that, you started 2-0 and and you're in the driver's seat of your division. Then you go on the road at what many are going to call a home game anyway against the Jacksonville Jaguars, which that's another one I'll probably be too because it's only an hour and a half away from me. So I'll three probably and be at the three Jacksonville and game. 3-0? 3 and, oh? three and oh. Could you see? Uh, hold on, let's let's ask the comment section, Dwayne. Do we at least beat Jacksonville? Yes or no in the comment section. On the road in Jacksonville, September 24th. Oh, hold on. That's September 24th. That means that's a is that a primetime Thursday night game? 8 Thursday night. We play Jacksonville Thursday night. And you don't have to travel far, and it's a somewhat familiar foe as what? well yes three and oh baby three and oh three and oh well man thursday night we going back to the reality days when we had shula exactly this is this season is the spirit of shula man and, and remember and remember one thing shula didn't didn't doubt going perfect that's what he built in that team from the very beginning from the very yes. start win every game so if he thought it we as fans at least should be able to think it ourselves. Think about what Shula did in 72. It was a whole bunch of fans sounding like some of y'all. Be realistic, bro. We ain't got the team, this and that. We ain't got nobody on defense. This is no names. Blah, 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 blah. And what Shula did? Went under freaking defeated. I said under freaking defeated. <laughs> man, come on, man. Listen, 3-0. 3-0 and oh to start the season. Patriots on the road with a new quarterback. We can steal that game. And, and personally, I don't feel like it's a steal. It's just a take. But for some of y'all, we can steal that game. And, and Buffalo at home in the inclement, in the weather? 
Come on, man. And guess what? Should I say four and oh? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see what that is. That's okay, Seattle. Yeah. We we go to Jacksonville, and that's Thursday night. Oh my gosh! See, I'm loving this schedule more and more. And let me tell and you we why. Got we got 11 days to prepare for. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was just about to say. We play Seattle at home. That's gonna be a tough game. But hold on, we got 11 freaking days to prepare for them. It's almost like having a bye. It's almost like having a bye because we have the Thursday night before and we get to prepare 11 days for them. And I'm sure they don't have 11 days. I'm sure they got the typical seven and they got to travel on the road. And they coming from the Ooh, West Coast to the East West Coast. Coast. And I hope it's a one o'clock start in all that heat. Hold on. You Let's get something straight. Let's get something straight. They not coming from the West Coast. They coming from the Northwest Coast. That's even further. That's what some people got to realize. Seattle, that's even farther than, than what many consider the West Coast. It's even further. Having won, shout out for the donation, said I like a late run. The league will be talking Shula. Yes, sir. Oh, man, I didn't miss one. Hold on. Um, And then DraftKings said undefeated for Shula. It's about to go down. Fins up. Woo! Now, I don't want to put all that on Shula, but that'll be sweet, man. Now, y'all talk about TDB realistic for once. I'm not saying undefeated. My fanhood says undefeated. I'm not saying undefeated, but the last two games, the last two games that the Dolphins play Seattle were close. The, 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 seven years ago, the Dolphins beat Seattle in Miami. And four, mm -hmm. four years ago, they lost a tough game where mm. it was for for the for the lack of faith in by Philbin caused <laughs> the Dolphins not to play to win but play scared and they lost mm -hmm. that game when they should have won and beat Seattle they should have beat Seattle in that in that game in in Seattle so I think that they can beat Seattle especially when you consider the way the schedule is breaking for the Dolphins 11 days of preparation, ladies and gentlemen. 11 days. It's not going to be an easy, easy game. But 11 days versus seven, well, technically six. 11 days, we have an advantage. The only, thing that kinda, the only thing that evens it out is the fact that we're on, hold, on the road. But the beautiful, no, 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 we're at home. I keep forgetting we're at home. We're at home for that God. game. And they we come to travel. They right. don't and have the, seven days. Let and the travel from it. Jacksonville to Miami is even shorter than a normal normal road game. So the schedule yes. makers are really setting it up for Miami to be successful early in the season. <laughs> Hold on. I want you to think about the Seahawks. They play on a Sunday. They're going to have Monday and Tuesday off probably. Let's just say Monday. I don't know. They, because they, are, they realize they're going to have to get to work early. Then they're going to have to travel on Saturday. They have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They have four days to prepare for Miami. Four days. And we got 10. Because yep. going to Jacksonville, we'll be back. We'll be When that game is over, the Miami Dolphins are going to hit the road and everybody go. I don't know if they're going to hit the road or they're flying. I don't know which one. I'm pretty sure they're probably going to fly in and out. They'll fly. They'll, they'll charter they'll plane. Be, they'll be back home, they'll be home at, at They'll be home at 3, 4 a.m. They'll be home. Well, they'll be home at 5 a.m. And they'll have the day off on Monday. On, um, Friday. What's that? They'll have on the day Friday. off on Friday. They'll, they'll probably have the day off Saturday. And the coaches will say, let's get to work Sunday. Here's your film. Here's your scouting packages. Study them. I'll see you Monday. And we're going to bust our behind that whole week preparing for them, and they only got four days. That is favorable for the Miami Dolphins. Can somebody smell 4-0? 4-0. 4 freaking 0 Starting the season, man. 4-0.
Cisco, 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 Cisco is correct. I was mistaken. Adam Gaze was the coach during that time, but he still played not the not the win, but he played the played not to lose. He didn't play the win in yeah, that man, game. That bum, four and freaking oh man, four and oh against the Seattle Seahawks. What you think the league saying about the Miami Dolphins starting out four and oh? They done took down the Patriots. They done took down Buffalo. Ah, uh, Jaguars, whatever. And they done took down the Seahawks. What you think they talk about? You know what they talk about? The Miami Dolphins have a big test. They have to travel across the pond to San Francisco at 4.05 p.m. for game five. What you think about game five, Dwayne? This is where I calm down a little. <laughs> oh, I think man. that if there's going to be a bump in the road, it will yeah. be these two games. But they're going to split one of those. They're going to win one of these two games. They're going to win mm -hmm. at least one of these two games between at San Francisco and at the Broncos. And mm -hmm. more than likely, they'll win at the Broncos. So I could give them five and one. I could give that to them. And, and that would be like, that's a great mm -hmm. start. That's a great start well, from, from going – from from going from zero and seven start the year before to five and one, that's a big turnaround. That is a big turnaround, and that's what meeting my expectations. If they even if they were to go four and two, that still would be a big turnaround. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give them the fact that they're going to win at least one of those two games. Listen, this is where I put it, Dwayne. San Francisco, we take an L. We're on the road on the West Coast, a good team. But even though we take an L, I will not be surprised if we win that game. Again, we built our defense to stop their offense. And defense, our defense travels. Our defense is built to stop a San Francisco's offense. It's just a matter of if our offense can produce enough points and in week five, will we have built enough chemistry and continuity on the old line to get it done? So I'm going to say an L, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't leave San Francisco 5-0. and oh. But TD will say 4-1. and one. Is that fair, ladies and gentlemen, in the comment section? Let me know at the five games what is Miami's record. Let me and Dwayne know right now in the comment section. We're going to wait on y'all. And Big J doing big things said, TD, we have a lot of warm games. Only cold games I really see is at Buffalo and maybe at New York. I can't wait to talk about those. There's another, to talk about there's it. another cold game because it does get cold in Ohio and it does get cold in Kansas City late in the year. Mm -hmm. But at the, at, you know, sometimes. It can get brick cold here in Ohio in late November. Wow! Do you see the comment section, Wayne? Oh, that oh that game is that game is at that at home. I apologize. I apologize. I'm looking at just no, at the schedule you, itself. Do you see the comment section? I see three and twos. I see a four and one. I see a five and two by Brian Gonzalez. <laughs> I saw five and O's. I see. Three and two. Listen, that. Listen, man. After five games, the Miami Dolphins gonna have four wins, y'all. Trust me, man. After five games, we gonna have four wins. Yep. Man, hey. let's move on. Let's move on. So San yeah. Francisco. What, what? What? And honestly, guys, I'm just giving San Francisco respect. Although they they went to the Super Bowl last year, I'm giving this team respect by saying that they're gonna beat us. When the truth is, I think that our defense can shut their offense down. But our offense, are they going to be able to produce? That's the only reason I'm giving them the right respect. And I'm going to be honest, depending on how our offense look in the first four games, I might be all in in week five, W. But we'll see. I'm going to pump the brakes. And TD got it 4-1 and one right now. What do you got it, Dwayne? I got it 4-1 and one after five. But there is, there is an opportunity if if the defense moves up 
and the, the offensive line gels, would I be surprised? No. Mm. If they won that game. Me so, either, but, man. That's, but, 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 it's truly how I feel. But to put it, to put it, to give it some real, to, to, to give some realism to it, I could go with four, four and one and be very satisfied with the fact that after five games, we're four and one rather than zero oh and five the way we were last year. Yeah. And when you think about, like, what I was talking about the split between, uh, the two games between the 49ers and the Broncos, being able to go to split those two games one way or the other, again, that would show that the team is growing because it's hard to win on the road. It is very hard. And although the Dolphins did that by traveling to, the, to Indianapolis last year and winning it on the road at Indianapolis, it's very hard to win on the road so if you can split at those two venues and and winning again, even after you come after a loss at San Francisco, to win the game at Denver would be a, be a good accomplishment because they drafted a lot of speed. And that's going to be the game that's going to really show how our secondary is because of all the speed that they drafted in the first in the first second and third rounds of the of this previous draft they trying to catch up with the with the kansas city chiefs they being denver so they added a lot of team to their wide receiver core so that game is going to be a game that the secondary is going to step up we're really going to find out at that point in time whether or not xavier howard is is back and at full strength, whether or not uh, Brandon Jones can do his part and whether or not Nick Needham can come out and provide the support in the in the dime and the nickel package, depending on how he's deployed, to properly defeat the Denver Broncos. So I can see after six games, five and one, and then – coming back home and facing the Chargers. Oh, I saw one of the comments every every time to get some get some payback from the from the Chargers. Every time I play the char the Dolphins play the Chargers, I want them to put a spanking on them for the Kellen Winslow game. So, no matter what, I want to beat the bricks off of the Chargers. Beat the bricks off of them. Woo! So you got. You got. Oh, no, I don't. I don't want to move too far ahead, man. <laughs> you all good on the way, man. Dwayne already went to charges. He ready to beat the brakes off of him. Beat I'm the winning. brakes off of him. <laughs> Jazza eight hundred three said, "I want the season to start now." I know. <laughs> I know. It's like guys. Like I'm gonna be honest. They need to stop this crap. They need to release the NFL schedule in like July, man, because the, the anticipation now is ridiculous. We already ain't got nothing really because of all this craziness going on. But man, I can't wait. So I wouldn't care if they if they play. I mean, I would love to see it where if everything calmed down to the fact that they could have the, the fans in the stadium. But even if they had to play in front of empty sta empty stadium, I just want to see football games. I just want to yeah. see how well the Dolphins are going to gel. I want to see whether Devontae Parker is going to continue to grow. I want to see whether or not uh, Malcolm Perry is going to be running jet sweeps and, and doing uh, 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 flea flicker passes to – Kirk Merritt or, or Devontae Parker or Preston Williams. I want to see whether or not Jordan Howard is going to be thundering through and Breed is going to be providing the lightning or if Balazs is going to be coming through. Whatever the case may be, I just want to see it because I've been starving for some type of sports. It's crazy, man. Now we got – now we got to wait because the first preseason game is the second week of August, at the end of the second week. So, honestly, let's just say 
into the third week, but the middle of the month. It's May the 7th, June, July, August. Three freaking months we got to wait, man. That's 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 torture. That is torture, man. But you got to remember. Torture. But you got to remember. They are they are they are players on the team that have to get indoctrinated, have to get the playbook down, have to get the communication down, have to get the calls down, have to learn how to go from a three technique to a one technique. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that have to be done before that. So every day. Flores should be taking advantage of the fact that he has this time so that way he can build that foundation and further strengthen that foundation. Well, we don't get um we don't get training camp until um July, the middle of July towards the end like July 20th or whatever. So, that's the real date, guys. We got about 2 months before we um get training camp, but we got we got we got we got um the dawn herself coming in as well with us, Dwayne. Ben Saturday, what's up, Ben Saturday? How you guys doing? Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I'm like really you dealing did. with a migraine right now, so it's like oh. pounding my head. But I'm here for you guys. Hi, everybody. Man, oh, Ben Saturday, oh, make some. Make some sense of it all because everybody's saying that TD is being all optimistic uh -huh. and TD is just a homer. He's never realistic. After five games, hey, what is our what is our record to you? After five, five after, games. oh my gosh! After five games, see, here's the thing, right? Um, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna beat um the Patriots. That should be a game that we win. Um, Buffalo, it's gonna be a hard fought game. Um. But I like the fact now that we have guys who can actually take down Josh Allen in the pocket and won't let him scramble out and extend plays. I think that game is really going to come down to the fourth quarter. It's going to be a lot closer. They have a good defense. We have a good defense. Um, it's only going to be the second week that we really see these guys together together. And they just added Stefan Diggs, which <laughs> – so, to me, so to me, the wild card, to me, the wild card is how big of a game Cole Beasley has that game. You know, mm. so because everybody Noah, seems to forget about him, but against Noah, man, listen, you know, listen, Cole Beasley has been taking names for a very long time. He just always seems to be open for no reason. But of course, I think we're gonna win that game. It's at home. We're gonna play our hearts out for Shula. Maybe a game-winning field goal or something. We'll see what happens. But it's gonna be very close. It's gonna be hard fall. I don't think we're just gonna. You know, hand it to the Bills like you were saying. Um, I didn't say gonna, we were handing it. I just said no, it was you, a double. You, you said we were gonna like beat them up or something like that. Like, listen, <laughs> if we beat them by one point, that's destroying them to me. Right? <laughs> a win, a win against Buffalo, no matter how it happens, it could be it could be two to zero. Hey, Howard, that we destroyed them. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling take some Excedrin, Jesus. I try to stay away from um things like that. I've been. I think it's a caffeine headache, so yeah. Um, and then Jacksonville. Listen, I'm crashing at the crib after that game, so just <laughs> just have the what's the name ready for me. I tell Hill I said hi. Uh, but I we should be Jacksonville. Um, Minshew. I think that's going to be more of like a run game for them. I don't think I don't think they're going to ask a second year quarterback to throw against our secondary, even though they have some. Um, Pretty decent wide receivers. I think they're going to try to let uh, Fournette if he's still there. <laughs> but I'm not afraid of Jacksonville's defense. So I really feel like we should have an offensive day. That should be a Thursday night game where where we dominate. If we don't dominate that game, it's going to say a lot about our team because I don't think our defense should be giving up a lot of points to Jacksonville. I also think that we should put up at least at least 24 points on them. So 24 to three, that's kind of comfortable to me. I feel like it should be bigger, but that's a game I could see. If Fitz is there, I could see Fitz going off for that game. I could see, you know, Devontae having like a two touchdown game because I'm not afraid of any of their D-backs. I could see Preston having one. I could see Gasecki, anyone in our, you know, wide receiver core. Thank you. Having like a day that is like a fantasy day. Like, if you ever want to start a Dolphins player, go ahead and start them against Jacksonville week three. 
Thursday night, get yourself some points, some easy points, sort of say. But um, where are we at after that? Uh, so that's a win. So now we're like two and one, three and zero. Oh, Cause after that, you have uh, you have Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Oh man. Hold on, hold on. Let me go back for a second. Mm -hmm. Let me go back for a second. You said the um, Jacksonville game um, mm -hmm. that we should win, right? Yeah. So it's you have us. You have us three and zero oh starting the season. Three and zero, oh, two and one. Depending on how we play. Ah, no, 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 Fitzsaddy. You know the rules, Fitzsaddy. You know the rules. You don't say Listen, there, I have a migraine. Let my migraine, let, my, let my migraine well, marinate. You let that migraine throw out one official. Tell me now, two and one or three and oh. Hurry Listen, up. Go, 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 go. I'm gonna I'm gonna be at Buffalo. I'm gonna be at that game. So we should we should be three and oh. I feel like we should play really hard for Shula. There, it's gonna be a it's gonna be I think that's a game everyone should wear like a throwback jersey, to be honest. I don't think we should see any of our new jerseys. I feel like everyone should be like, all right, we're going to wear the retro throwback just in honor of Shula uh, and make it give it that, you know, old school feel like when, when he was our coach. But 3-0 and is possible. Like I said, it's going to come down to the fourth quarter and how we're um, – how our defense is, you know, how they have come together. I think that Jackson, I love his hat. Jesus, that's a nice hat. A nice I think, hat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think by week three against Jacksonville, after that, our defense should be together because it should be a pretty, it should be a pretty easy day for them. Going in there. Stop, you know, stop the Fournette. They're not going to ask Minshew to throw against Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. You control the line of scrimmage. That's why you got all these big guys for. <laughs> and just throw it on them because it should be an aerial attack. We should be able to run on them, throw on them. We should at least have 24 points by the third quarter. 3-0 mm. for 3-0, 2-1. Stop! <laughs> 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 Listen, you know, crazy with that best, man. I'm being, I'm being, I'm being objective. I'm being no, objective. Best, best. right? Because my thing is like this: at the end of the day, a lot of people see, you know, Buffalo as the big brother. That is the game where you, if you, that you should try to put your foot on the throat of Buffalo, but. I would say this: Josh Allen has not. Josh Allen has never had a great game against the Pats, but we are not the Pats. We brought in some Pats players, but we are still not the Pats. You feel me? So to me, it's going to be like, what kind of day does Agba and Van Noy have? Because it's going to be up to them to contain, contain you know Josh Allen. That's what it comes down to me. Like I think I think Devin Singletary will probably have like a nice eighty piece against us. That's that might be like stretching it, but I feel like, like I said, Cole Beasley <laughs> and John Brown because nothing is like this. We may put so much attention on Stefan Diggs that they just start hitting us underneath <laughs> with John Brown and, and Cole about, Beasley. About I'm Cole trying to be Beasley objective. Because, I'm trying to be objective. I don't think to worry that much about him. I'm not. I'm not going to just say week two that our defense is 100% rolling, especially when we don't have. You know, OTAs, we don't have many camps. We're just going to training camps. No, no. You I'm said we're going to put so much emphasis on one guy. Well, we got Byron Jones and Xavier Howard for. But all I'm saying is, granted, if they're going to man up against Steph all day, okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know what they're going to do. You feel me? Mm. We're coming off. We're coming off a Pats team who doesn't have – I wouldn't say they have a scary wide receiving core, right? They're not going to ask Stid to do too much. So our real secondary test will come week two. That's going to be the first time that like, you're really going to see how good and like how great our secondary is. That's going to be the first time where they're really actually going to be quote unquote untested, like tested. No one's afraid of the, the page and the kill Harry. Like, okay. Like, I don't, can anybody else name me? Julian Edelman, okay. Edelman He's, just went to Tampa Bay. He yeah. just signed with Tampa Bay. He's down who? there with, with uh, the Brady now. Who, Julian Edelman? Uh, Ju Julian Edelman. Check out ESPN today. He's down there. So he no way. Been, I'm the kicks 
kitchen, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you serious? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, being, I like, didn't know that. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I just saw. Oh, no, he's still with oh. the Patriots. He's still with the Patriots. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. He would have to get traded. That would be. Yeah. Yeah, he has a contract for my Gronk, it Gronk out. is with Tampa. If you think about right. Gronk, right? But Edelman is still up there. So hold on. I think Let our me. first secondary test is going to come. But my thing is, no one's afraid of you know Josh Allen throwing the ball. So I think the first test that 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 comes, you know, you got the Buffalo game with Stephon Diggs, but then the next real test after that doesn't come until Week Five against Seattle with DK Metcalf. Yeah, and Tyler Lockett, and uh, and Wilson. Mm-hmm. Well, whole, uh, Wilson was having a season last year before he got uh, hurt, so people better not sleep on that tight end. Well, my question is this then, with Miami and what they have and they bring to the table, mm-hmm. why why is it that that game would be the one in which they will be tested and not game four? Well, because three is against Jacksonville. Four is against uh, who you have that TD? Seattle, right? Oh, Seattle. 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 That's Seattle. Okay. That is mm-hmm. Seattle. Okay. I thought that was week five. Okay. Week five is Frisco. Yep, that is correct. All right. Well, with Frisco, this is what we're going to find out where our run defense is. Because now this is going to be ground and pound on the road, and I'm not convinced that Garoppolo will bring fear to anybody, especially the way he showed and stunk it up there in the Super Bowl. So now we have to be able to say, hey, look, if we can take them out of that running game and make them one-dimensional where Garoppolo has to try to beat Miami with his arm, I think Miami got a good chance of winning that game. That's the reason why I'm not really – I'm not scared of uh, San Francisco. I can see Miami starting five wins and zero losses. Like I said, it's a matter of us playing to our strength. So now – and I think we have the type of coach that will cause Miami to play to the strength. Let me ask y'all whoa, whoa, a question real quick. <laughs> go ahead because I don't really want to respond to that. But go ahead. Yes. Well, I want to ask y'all this. Mm-hmm. Should the Chiefs' defense last year be better than our defense this year? I will only say yes from the standpoint of continuity. They didn't lose anything now, unless because the only one that was a big cog for them to lose was no, no, Jones. no, no, not, not, no, not this year. I'm not talking about the Chiefs' defense this year versus oh, okay. our defense this year. Okay, the Chiefs' defense last year. Mm-hmm. Is our defense going to be better than their defense was? So will this version of the Dolphins be better than last year? Last year's Chiefs defense. Version of defense. Bingo. Bingo. So, <clears throat> matter of perspective. And yeah. it, put it this way. If we still had Patrick Graham mm-hmm. and that way the continuity could build in, I could see it. But to me – now, since we got a new defensive coordinator, even though we really feel, I believe the fans feel as well, that Brian Flores will be the one that will be pulling the shots and really calling the shots when it comes to that, along with the defensive coordinator. Now, since you have that along with new players, I think it will be possibly improved, but just as the offense, I believe that it has to be given time to jail. And to me, I think about – since we know defenses jail quicker than offenses, especially if both since both of them are changing, I really believe that the defense will carry itself and be ready, and it will be better than last year. At the level of Kansas City, though, the thing to me, because the thing that changed Kansas City to me overall was Tyron Matthew. When Tyron Matthew got in there, that defense, that total defense for Kansas City totally changed. And that happened week six of last year. So if Miami's defense can play together and kind of stay consistent, I can. I don't know if it would be as good, but it it improved. Listen, it, week, it just it's. Go ahead, go ahead, Dwayne. I'm sorry. Go ahead. By week six, most of the elements of the defense will have been will have faced a challenge to it. And you'll be able to determine whether or not it's a stronger defense than Kansas City last year's defense by week six. Because you're going to face uh, 
two dynamic wide receivers. You're going to face a running game that you haven't seen before. And you're going to uh, have opportunities to dominate two relatively young quarterbacks. So by the time week six, week seven comes around, you'll be able to make an evaluation of whether or not the Dolphins defense of 2020 is better than the defense of the Kansas City Chiefs was last year. Just because you will have had all three elements, all three levels of the defense challenged in different manners. Because the Denver Broncos, like I said, they present a lot of speed. Seattle and, and, and San Francisco, they they bring about a, or bring about a physicality threat. You have two young quarterbacks in the Patriots and the, and the Jaguars. And then you have a running quarterback with a with one dynamic player in the wide receiver core in Buffalo. So by the time week six, week seven comes about, you will all have a pretty good idea where the defense stands. And I am of the, the mindset of Donald that the defense should gel quicker because normally defenses gel quicker than the offense. Well, this defense is going to gel quicker because you got Flores guys in there going to be teaching these guys. But to say that, like for us to compare that, like to me, the AFC West was not very threatening last year. Right, like no one was afraid of you know the Flacco Broncos or the Drew Lock Broncos. The Drew Lock Broncos actually came on, but yes, in the beginning, did. the Flacco Broncos were not doing anything. I couldn't even get fancy points from Philip Lindsay. Jesus Christ, that that was a dumb pickup for Flex. We're not gonna go there. We still really do. <laughs> no, I'm really serious, right? And then like the Chargers, uh, Philip Rivers, I don't know what he was doing last year because you had Keenan Allen, you had, well, Melvin Gordon was kind of sitting out, I guess, right? But at was still balling out right yeah, and they back. still and they still underperformed and then what you had the Raiders the Raiders was uh Josh Jacobs and nothing else I mean yeah. Tyrell Williams had a couple games um um Waller I love their tight end Waller so he was the leading receiver yeah so at the end of the day what did the teams really have to do within the division now granted they played some great teams outside of it but to me it always seemed like their defense was giving up points early and then the offense, especially like in the playoffs, like if you were really that good and like you're giving up all these points in the first half, what did the like, what was it? Like the Texans almost had them, but then they came back. Like Patrick Mahomes just started taking over the game. Their defense had the ability to, say, but I think their defense also led the league in sacks, if I remember correctly. Yeah, You wouldn't believe it. After week six. Yeah, their defense, even after they lost, uh, I think they lost Agba like later, or something like that. Yes, they, they, and they, they lost Mahomes too. I to, like, remember Mahomes had that uh, dislocated knee. Yeah, so they were a lot, you know, better. But to me, I think them being the AFC West was a very, you know, opportune thing for them. Just like yeah. the Patriots had the AFC East where they could beat up on, you know, low bros. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Think about, the, think about the top the top teams, Ravens, Chiefs, and Pats last year. All their all the other teams in their division were somewhere battered. The Browns were underperforming because Baker Mayfield didn't know how to get the ball to uh, OBJ. Lost a lot of money betting on him getting a touchdown for those first couple weeks. We're not going to go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> the Steelers lose their start. The Steelers lose Roethlisberger, and I think Connor is out for a minute, <laughs> and they lose a B. Right. <laughs> when you gonna then, take Landry? When you gonna take? When you gonna take him? Huh? Who? Landry. Jarvis Landry. What about him? Why didn't he you take him over him. OBJ? Huh? Why didn't you take him over OBJ? Listen. At the end, of, listen. I'm gonna tell people because, like, sometimes you have to look at the lines. <laughs> There were times I did I did get it with Jarvis, especially against us. I knew Jarvis was going to score against us. So I, I kind of, I mean, mm -hmm. I. <laughs> 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 but, like, I mean, because it had gotten so bad. I think, like, OBJ was, like, plus three something for a touchdown at one point. So it was kind of, like, it was enticing. 
Like I even had, like I even bet, like Ebron would score a touchdown against us, right? He did, but then they're gonna call a freaking interception. I was happy but mad at that point. But I mean, like the top teams, they were like in weaker divisions. Like if you really think about it, like the teams around them weren't that good. I mean, you could say Buffalo had a year, but they still couldn't beat the Patriots for what it was worth. That I guess that does say something about our team, huh? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, let, but, well, let me add. Well, let me ask y'all this because I want to move it forward too, um, because we 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 done went through the first five games, okay. and before we move on, Donald, um, what do you have the record in the first five? Well, until they lose, they five and zero to me. Let's go, that's, baby. That's me. They five and zero. Um, but being if being that way, I'm I'm gonna give you two scenarios. One, I'm looking at them being five and zero. Period. My thing is. You, I like the coach that we have in Brian Flores, and I believe two of those games is going to come to coaching, and I believe his call and what he does will be the outcome of the game. So that's the reason why I'm looking at them from a fan standpoint as 5-0. and oh. As a person that would have to, like you, Finn Sanity, bet or pop, <laughs> particularly looking at, okay, if I were to sit up here and try to base this on what teams we're actually playing, since this is a role game going all the way to the West Coast in Frisco, that would be the only game that I would really be skeptical about. So I would say 4-1-1 the first five. Which That's what I'm trying to be. what I right. said, looking at it analytically, and, you know, you, you have a chance to go 5-0, and oh, but if they went 4-1, and one, I would not be – Disappointed. There you but go. See, that's the thing, though. Y'all are forgetting with San Francisco, our line, our offensive line is still, we don't know how good it's going to be, especially against that front four where they can just send for Like, come on. We like for us to objectively say that that young offensive line is going to be able to stop Bosa and all of them. Come on. Hey, I, I'm just saying, I feel like we're going to, we're going to try to run the ball. They're going to try to run the ball. Yes. It's going to be very, it's going to be a very low scoring game because the clock is going to be getting, you know, ran out by, you know, us each team running the ball. But let's not sit here and act like we don't have a young offensive line who we don't know, like how good they're going to be, how well they're going to gel. And that, that is a monster. That, that defensive line is a monster. Now, granted, if we can go out and block them and come out there with the win, I'm happy. I'm excited. But, you guys are looking at it as a standpoint, oh, you're not afraid of Garoppolo. Well, last year Trash. San Francisco was not about Garoppolo. It was about <laughs> it was about that run game and that defense. Yep. Now I understand that our defense has gotten better, but we gotta still go out there and prove it. Yes. You feel me? And yes. my thing like this: until I see my offensive line block for the run game. We're sitting ducks against San Francisco. We literally are, and that's just and that's just me being honest. I no, I oh, go ahead. <laughs> what TD? No, like like TD. Come on, like let's be honest. We have Josh Rosen coming out party. <laughs> no, I agree with that. I agree with that. I said that that might I'm be our first objective. loss. I'm just yeah. being objective. I'm just being. I'm being objective. I said I said that might be our first loss because game number five is still considered early in the season. Okay. Still a lot of continuity mm-hmm. and gelling, but I don't care what nobody say. We beat New England in New England. We yeah. coming home tough game against Buffalo. It ain't. Yeah. A, it's not a guaranteed win, but I, I think that we could pull that off. We, we we're gonna be du- beat Jacksonville, okay? We're yeah. gonna beat Jacksonville, sure. and we got a we got eleven days to prepare for the Seahawks, and technically they got four due to travel. Man, we better take advantage of that. With yes. San Francisco, it's gonna be tough. I, I have a four. Seattle? Yeah, yes, they got like four Seattle. days. They have four days to prepare. Five days, four days to prepare, and we got ten because we play Thursday night against the Seahawks. No, we play Thursday night against, against Jacksonville, Jacksonville, and we got ten days before we eleven days before we play the Seahawks. But Seahawks, first of all, they got six days. Plus, they also have to travel, travel. as well. And they mm-hmm. always have that one day off. They're gonna have four days to prepare. We're gonna have like nine to ten. That's still a playoff at, team at home, though. Yeah, no, no, no. I said it's gonna be tough, but if our coach, listen, that's the perfect scenario where 
Win or lose, it's on the coach. You know what? That's... Win or lose is on the coach. You got 11 days versus five. Win or lose, that's on the coach. My, yes. my take. To me, to me, that game is more about utilizing that heat that we're going to have. Yes. They should be tired by the fourth quarter. Yes. If they're not if they're not tired and drawn out by the fourth quarter, we didn't do something right. We should be able to hit them with some blows if we if we're going to be Seattle. But I'm trying to think. That's when mm. that's when the Maulers on the offensive line. That's when you got to yeah, take, start letting have, it go. Have to be uh, uh, utilized to wear the Seattle C Seahawks defensive line down by running the ball. That's the yes. game that. Right. Jordan Howard and yes. Belage have to make their impact on the yes. game. Okay. I think I think I think Breida will be more effective. Yeah. I, I during that game, too. especially in, especially like coming out in the third quarter, just start hitting them with speed. Even if it's like hitting them across the middle with some passes, just just get them running. What? Cuz you want to tire you want to tire them linebackers out. Like I would not be surprised if we start Send them Brita out going five wide and put in <laughs> and putting Brita on a linebacker. Like to me, that's what I would do. And just you know get them tired. You tie linebackers. You tie linebackers out also by having that center and that guard keep hitting them on those running plays. Yes. Yes. Okay. When they gotta worry about getting hit and getting blocked by that by that center. Mm -hmm. That's 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 only if they're coming. They they'll if the Dolphins are running the ball in the third and fourth quarter like they should in that heat, they're coming. That's going to happen. If they still had Mike Pouncey at center, I wouldn't even worry about it. I knew Mike Pouncey, he would get to the linebackers. So that was a that was a no-brainer. But with this current line that we have right now, I'm not sure whether or not our center will be able to engage at the second level. Center. Let's hope that, <laughs> yes. Let's hope that Harris can make that, that transition yeah. and get used to the, used to the yes. heat of Miami. Will be fine. Okay, but yeah. but let, can I ask y'all a question right quick? Absolutely. When we talk when we talk about the old line, the one person that I I hear all the time that's really kind of uh, uh, pushed out the way. Everybody talks about Michael Dieter, but nobody mentions Shaq lost uh Shaq Calhoun, and Shaq Calhoun had the best O line score from this guard position that was out there. Now, the one thing that a lot of people may not know about Shaq Calhoun, because this is what I watched him. He reminded me of Mike Pouncey from the standpoint he always, out of, out of the guard play, he was the one that was getting to the second level. He played center also at Mississippi State. He's the right size, 6'3", 315. I think he can move in, in, in the event they needed him to. He can move into that center position and he could he will give you some stability calling from that center position. But I understand the guy that they got from uh, from uh, New England, he, he's used to doing it and he can do it. And he's on a one year contract. Yeah. But don't sleep on Calhoun because Calhoun is one of the most athletic big men that you got. That whereas he can get to that second level, we got some road graders, but we don't have anybody that I can see from the old line. Who do you think that is athletic enough that can get to those second level blocks on the linebackers? To whereas even if it's if it's a down, if it's just a three yards and a cloud of dust, it can at least wear on the linebackers to wear them down in Miami seat. We got to get sure. that uh, Hard Rock Cafe. We got to get that Hard Rock Stadium being like the Orange Bowl used to be. Yep. Let me respond on that because the old line, and here's what I think we need to realize about the old line. There ain't gonna be a set O line. Just like mm -hmm. there ain't gonna be a set D line, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. I really, I truly don't believe there's gonna be a set O line. I think if we're running power run, you're gonna be you're gonna see a different personnel in there. I think if we're running speed run, you're gonna see a different personnel. I think if we're running pass protection, you're gonna see a different personnel. So Whoever's going to fit best for the situation that we're trying to win, um, that's who's going to play. Um, so I think that every offensive lineman that end up making this 55-man roster will be playing this year and playing a, for, uh, a respectable amount of snaps. 
when it comes to who's the reserves on the O line, it's mm-hmm. we're gonna have reserves, but those reserves are gonna get probably thirty percent of the snaps. So are they really reserves? Yes, but in all actuality, it's all it just depends on what we're trying to accomplish. So Shaq, I see, I see the um the attributes he has, and it makes sense what you're saying. So it just depends on what we're trying to get across in that game and who gives us the best chance of accomplishing that. And then even even if somebody gives us a better chance to accomplish it, you're going to have certain snaps where certain guys are playing anyway. So it's just going to be mixed up, just like the D-line. We can't sit here and specifically say these are the guys that's playing on the D-line. That lineup's going to change so often and frequent, it's going to be ridiculous. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah, who practices the best? Yep. Who knows who knows their assignments the best on a weekly basis? That's mm-hmm. who's going to start. And there will be some situations where there may be some some substitutions for certain yeah. packages. And also, remember, next man up. Somebody get have a, have a nick. Everybody's expected to know the know the role of the person they're replacing. Yeah, especially sure. in a zone blocking scheme and a power zone scheme, they all are supposed to know what each of the other members of that line are supposed to be doing. So you have the opportunity to play. And one other thing, the, the league is mandating now that they carry at least eight, if not nine, linemen every game because of the yes. injuries that happened on the offensive line last year. They're making teams carry at least eight offensive linemen active for each game. So yes. there's going to be some opportunities for additional linemen to play mm-hmm. because they're available to play. So let's um guys, let's get into let's keep on moving on with the schedule. What do we think about the Denver Broncos? Away. We got to go on the road in that it's hard breathing place. It's a win. Now it's not as cold. October is cold, but it ain't as cold as it'll be in November and December. It's a it's a win as long as they as long as they they keep it outside of seven points. Mm. They can wait, 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 what, what do you lead. mean? Because kicking in that kicking in mile high is difficult. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. And you don't want to have a game on the line with with with, with the field goal kickers. So you want to make sure that you have a lead for that game. You don't want to be messing around with those with those wings up there and the altitude because the ball does crazy mm-hmm. things. That place and Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, the football does a lot of crazy things with respect to the field goal field. and the Meadowlands as well or MetLife Stadium. So you don't really want to get into a close game where a field goal wins it or loses it for you. So we're gonna go from playing one. We're gonna go from playing Joey Bosa on week five Mm -hmm. to playing Von Miller on week six, Mm -hmm. along with a quarterback which has improved, who now has weapons because they did get uh, they got Jerry Judy, yep, and and a couple others that are going to be flowing along with them in that altitude. That's going to be a good game, but I think that will be a game, too, that will be the coming out party for our offense, to me. I believe that that is the prime game where we will feature, where I I think that uh, Devontae Parker and prayerfully Preston Williams will come out they come out and show them and say, Mm-mm, you ain't ready for prime time yet. So it will be interesting to see that and to also go along with a little run. But I think that's where our offense, where our passing game was, will show itself in week six, and there will be a win against Denver in Denver. I think the key to that game is going to be the secondary of the Dolphins because of the speed that you mentioned that they added mm-hmm. on the offensive side of the ball. Yes. That it comes down to a, a, a shootout. And like I said, with the secondary, that's going to be a big key for that game. And that's why I said after week six, you'll know where this defense stands because each one of the weeks previously have tested a certain facet of the defense. This week, if everything holds chalk, will be the test 
for the entire secondary, not just one person on the secondary, but the entire secondary because of the speed that Denver brings on the field. Mm. That game Insanity. That game starts and ends in one place, stopping Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. You have stopping to make them. Melvin, Melvin Gordon, Gordon and Philip Lindsay. If you can make Denver make the Broncos one dimensional, yeah, go ahead. Give give me the win. But if we not doing that and they running us up there, running us up and down in the field and a mile above sea level, oh, it, it can get real nasty real quick. So to me, y'all mentioning the passing game, I'm thinking, well, nah, you don't spend this money on Melvin Gordon for him to be just standing back there. Why? Because then what are they going to do? They're going to use that because you have a young quarterback to open, up, to open up the play action for him. Yeah, Drew Locke came along, but he had Corden Sutton and he was feeding him the ball. He has what Jerry Judy on him now, but I don't think they're going to ask that young man to do it on his own. No, 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 no. That game starts and ends if we can make Denver one dimensional. Now, if we can make them force Drew Lock to pass the ball, then yeah, we're gonna have a field day with our secondary. But that that starts with our front seven, to Wait, be honest. To me, in Fincanity, in Juwan James, there at uh, Denver, too. Yeah, if he's healthy. If he's healthy, mm. yeah. As long as, as long as we don't put Xavier Howard on Jerry Judy, we should be all right. <laughs> don't start that. <laughs> don't start that. Next, next, next. Boy, I can see it now. I know one thing. We better not put no Xavier Howard on Jerry Judy because if Jerry Judy embarrass that man, listen, y'all, y'all ain't gonna hear the end of it from me. I'm going all the way off. No, Xavier TV. Howard better come with his A game this year. TV. I have zero tolerance for Xavier Howard not playing the hey, best hey. football he can play. TD, they're going to put Igbenogany back on him. They're going to say, remind you of what you did that last game y'all played in that iron ball. You ain't have to pull that out. That Man, is, listen. That. <laughs> really? Somebody said X won't be there. He'll be hurt by week five. Don't do that. Nah. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I think they're going to save him for the playoffs, TD. I this think a secondary as a unit is going to stop them. As well, though. Oh, yeah. For, for the matchups like this, that teams that present a lot of speed, you know, this is probably one of the reasons why you draft an Igben, Igbenonomy, just so that you have the depth to be able to stick with the wide receivers and provide the speed to cover them. Yes. Listen, this is how I truly feel about the Denver Broncos at home. This is this is what this game is going to come down to to me. I don't care about the wide receivers. I don't care about the running game. This is I on care the road, about, right? Yeah, it's on the road. I care about the coaching in this game because this is a classic Miami Dolphins game where you feel like you got a great chance to win and you lose. This is that historic. This is like every year that one game where you like we should we can win this game, but you lose, and that's why it's gonna matter for Flores to turn the page and say we can win this game and we go win. This is the one time we can win this game and we go win. It's always two or three games a season where you we can win this game. Like you really feel truly that deep down, you can win it and you lose. And for once, this is like one of those hump games. Do you get over the hump? Do you lose to San Francisco the week before and get right back to business? Or do you start the season four and two and start your decline? And this is a this is a coaching game. This is, I don't think this is a personnel game because I think both teams have the right personnel to play against each other. This is an all coaching game right here. And I think and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna bet my money on Flores. I'm gonna bet my money on Flores. So I got five and one, baby. I got five yeah, and what? one. Five, five and one. Five and one. Hey. Five and one. Five and one going, going into San Diego. I mean, going coming home to San Diego. Coming home to San Diego at one o'clock. What y'all think about that? Los Angeles. Yep. <laughs> Los Angeles TV. Chargers. Yes. yes. Yeah, I keep saying San Diego. You're right. Oh my God. Yeah. Dwayne did that to me. Yeah, <laughs> but you know I, what, TD? It's a hard habit for me to break to realize. I know, right? That, you know, but TD, uh, and, and, and Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, man, that's going to be tough, too. Why? It's at home. 
no, no, no. We're just talking about staying no. in Las Vegas instead of Los Angeles. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. That's oh, what right. I'm saying. As far as the habit with San Diego okay. and LA, LA Chargers. So, so what we doing at home? Against the Chargers? Yeah. Are we going to get some revenge? That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I take it as a win. We should have won that game last year. We, I take it as a win. However, TD, I will say this. I do believe that the coach for the Chargers is one of the one underrated coaches in the NFL Anthony. as well. Yeah. I, I, I think he is very underrated. And I think he will have his team ready to play. But I think us coming back home, I chalk it up to a win. I think that's a win. Man, listen, I hope – it depends to me who's underneath center that game and how much time they have. But to me, I'm I'm not worried about the Chargers. I'm really not. I don't care, I don't care what option it is. I don't, I don't care really who under center. Who you scared of under center? Who you, who you scared of under center? Who, who, do who, is you, who is you Did worried it? about under – hold on. Let me get this straight now. Who that's are you crazy. worried about under center? That's Pouncy, Ooh. baby. Pouncy for the for the Chargers. Just say no, no, no. The just, quarterback. Just, what quarterback you worried just, about? Did I not just follow that up with "I'm not worried about the Chargers"? Don't do this, CD. Because I, I will I, come for you on Monday. Don't make me come for you on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, that's a W, man. Let me put that in my little book, man. You put. Let me put that in oh my gosh. book. Gosh. Can we get the schedule up real quick? I was. <laughs> Yeah, hold on. Let me let me put it back up. It looked like we're six and one right now. It looked what? like we're no. six and one. Jesus. Who's next now? The, Chargers. the, the LA Rams at home again. Let's see. Another That's West right? Coast team coming to the East Coast. Yep. Give me my W. What? I ain't stutter. <laughs> Give me my W. <laughs> Give me my well, Give me my is, that, is every game a W for you? Like, are we just going to like put nope, that in the No, nope, we. It looked like we okay. lost to San Francisco. That's it so far. That's it. Why? Okay, okay, for Sanity. Why I need to worry about um the, the um rain? Did I say? Did I just say? Did I say that? I'm just asking you. Uh, well, you 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 came at me I'm like what? You. You said what? what? Like, oh, hold on. Nigga, you just said give me my W. Like, I want to know. Come on. We all been giving our reason. And you come on, break it down for me. Break it down for me today. Because we've been breaking down why we think it's going to be a win and a loss. You just said give me my W. So what? Break it down. Yes. Break it down for the people. I'm with you. It's I'm simple. With you. It's Go simple. Ahead, simple. Uh-huh. It's simple. If we start out the season, okay? Uh-huh. Let me take the Rams out of there. If we right. start out the season six and one. I am telling you now, this team is embodying the spirit of Don Shula. And we are on a roll. We have some, we're feeling good about ourselves. We're at home. We're gelling. More fans are going to be in the stands. I ain't even talking about X and O's. I'm talking about We don't know. We don't know what COVID is going to do as, you know, a form of more fans in the stands. Listen, COVID or not. COVID or not, COVID or not, Mm -hmm. they traveling on the road in this heat. It's a W for insanity. Why do I have to be worried about the Rams? They can pump sound. They can pump the fans' sound into the stadium. Exactly. Why do I have to be worried about the Rams? Why don't y'all give me the reasons I should be worried about the Rams? Well, well, me, Mm -hmm. one, as much as we're talking about trenches, you probably got Mm -hmm. the best trench buster that can make a great O-line look very average, very quick in that defensive tackle for the Rams. Aaron Donald. Yes, Aaron Donald. Do oh, not hold on. Let, me, let, me, let me pause Donald, for a second. Let me Michael pause Brockers. for a second. That's the Go same ahead. thing they said about Khalil Mack two years ago when, he, when we played the Bears at home. The same thing they said about Khalil Mack, and nobody even know he played that game. He played yes. almost every snap and didn't even have a hurry. This is true. I'm glad we got the same offensive line. And we had true. to stop killing. No, we stuff. got a we got a better one, Finn Sanity. We got yeah, a better true. one now. We got a, I, would, we got I wouldn't a, say Khalil Mack is better than Aaron Donald, though. Yeah, come on, man. You think? Listen, listen. At the end of the day, it's all about schematic football. You can right. neutralize a defensive a defensive lineman. 
Okay. As long as you, if you're running away from inside, if you're doing this, if you're doing that, creating the right situations, creating the right double teams, whatever it may be, you can neutralize a specific um defense alignment. Well, and, like and I, I said, do... go ahead. Oh, no, no, TD, go ahead and finish. Like I said, W. Okay. We're on a road. So what? So what? Okay. Well, I'm going to give you another player to watch out for. His name is Malcolm the, oh, Brown. Hold on. Who Jalen Ramsey going to cover? Who Jalen Ramsey going to cover? Who Jalen Ramsey going to cover? Devontae. What? what? Hold, hold, on. Hold, on. Hold, on. hold on. So Hold on. So Devontae can do him just like um Gilmore got oh, done Gilmore. last year? I know y'all see on Facebook all the videos mm-hmm. about Gilmore, defensive player of the year, yeah, and Devontae think, Parker no, laughing. Listen. I ain't nobody. Yeah, I did like Stefan Gilmore was. We knew who Stefan Gilmore was when he was with Buffalo. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do so that. Listen, listen, he I gets don't on a care. better team in a better situation and, and shines, but come on. We we know who Stefan Gilmore was, is, and won't be from when Ramsey, he was with Buffalo. Ramsey's going to be just like he was in Jacksonville, playing good football and losing games. Huh? He's going to be just like he was in Jacksonville, playing good football but losing games. Listen. Listen, we don't know what the Rams' offense is going to be because I mean, girly, girly, girly was girly was dealing with some <laughs> issues last year, so that kind of made them one dimensional. No one trusts golf, you feel me? Like, no one yes. says, Oh, golf is going to go out there and win you a game, but let, we don't know what they're going to look like. That's the we're going into this pick blinded. No, nope. you know I mean? watch the yeah, running back, blind. watch Malcolm Brown for the Rams. Yeah. That's that's like my my like guy. And watch, for him and watch, watch him. And, and watch Cal Van Noy for the Dolphins. Yes, I'm going to watch him. I'm going to watch, watch him. We still got to watch that O line. The Browns have a very good O line. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think the heat and the humidity is going to get to them and it's going to be a factor. Hold so on. They O-line got better? They O line got better than last year? Uh, by, the, by what they have right now, I think so. So they got better about- than that. And the person running behind it has gotten better because they're going to mm-hmm. be healthier. Yes. Ah, you don't know that. Hey, listen. But, but like I said, I'm still chalking it up to a win, though, TD. I am. I'm chalking it listen. up to a win. We got a chance That's to really – this would be a ground and pound game. They got to come to Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we're going to be <laughs> six and one. S- six and one. We're gonna be six and one. Do you know what that ca- that carries with it? Embody in the spirit of Don Shula, six and one. Rams, come in here and take this L. Come take this L. Embody in the spirit of Don Shula. Okay. Ooh, okay. Listen, it looks good I'll on paper. One, Gotta man. play it. I got him at Y'all five. Better... I got him at six and one too. Six and one right now. So. Y'all better recognize this schedule. Listen, I they haven't made... won in over six games. I was going to be playing all of them. <laughs> but, all right, man. What do y'all think about yeah. at Arizona on the road? Mm. Yeah, that's not, um, I Ooh. think that's uh, Xavier begin Xavier begin school by the sh- by, <laughs> by DeAndre says to begin at a time. Not because of not because of a lack of talent, but I think that that might be one of those unexpected L's that Flores uses to get their attention. I'm going to go just the opposite from you, Dwayne. I'm thinking this will be a, this will be a game in which Josh Rosen, because I really believe, I I think Fitzpatrick and Rosen will be leading the charge at least as for the QBs for right now until Tua can get acclimated to the NFL. And right now, this would be a perfect scenario for Josh Rosen to go in there and help be the game manager this team will need going into Arizona. I can see. So you us. say, wait, hold up, hold mm-hmm. up. I'm sorry. So mm-hmm. you saying Fitz has Fitz has us, Fitz has us at six and one, and we're and we if got that chemistry going, though, or something like that. If he and makes they're it, going to, and they're going to sit Fitz. But but I'm saying just to prove saying, a point. Well, no, I'm saying from this standpoint, uh, Fitz Sanity. I believe mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick possibly will start the first couple of games, but I do believe Rosen at one point or another will be taking over for the remainder. That's just me. 
I even believe that he will take it over in training camp. I think that he will take over the starting job. So I'm saying either one of those two quarterbacks will be behind center. That's just me. And I'm saying if Rosen is the one behind center, when they play the, play, uh, the Cardinals, I can see him having the moxie to go in there and take care of business and win the game. I can even see it for Fitzpatrick, depending on what the game plan will be, not just in a quote, we're going to win, but whether or not it will come down to running and going against their D line to wear them out or whether or not it gets into a shootout. To whereas, hey, I think our, our wide receivers are better than yours. We're going to pass. We're going to do a lot of play action pass and we go in there and we take care of our business. This one, I I can see yeah. Miami pulling this one out. I because I got Miami going five and three on the road. This is one of those. Why this is one of those. That's a win for me. I don't even understand why y'all talk about Miami could pull this off. This is a guaranteed win. Arizona ain't nothing. Ain't nobody <laughs> worried about no Arizona Cardinals. Man. <laughs> ain't nobody worried about no Arizona Cardinals. This is Get gonna that be same energy. Yeah, that, that, Listen, I'm going to keep, hey, I'm gonna keep, keep this in and then no question <laughs> no about it. Hey, listen, I don't even know what we're talking about. I don't even know why we even stopping to conversate Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> what, what did they do last year? <laughs> I don't care what piece is. Listen, this is a guaranteed W. Well, Kyler, <laughs> Kyler Murray, no chance whatsoever against this defense. And this off and this offense should be rolling by this point. I don't listen. This was the time where Fitz start taking off. Even if we stuck with Fitzpatrick, this is when they, they start gelling and the continuity start rolling. Ain't nobody worried about Arizona whatsoever. I don't even know why this is a discussion. <laughs> so you this got him at you got him at nine and one. Everybody else, oh oh, and Donald got him at nine and one, and I got him at eight and two. Going into or eight and one go or seven and two going into week ten against the Jets. That's if uh, insanity probably got him. Insanity got him five and five right now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's true because he got us moving to San Diego. He got us moving to the Rams. Yeah, first of all, I didn't say. Listen, my thing is like this: y'all choking it up like. For some of these games, y'all just saying, boom, we're going to win. I get that. But a lot of these games, I have them being close. Like, we're like, we could be like in a lot of like one possession games, like one score games. Yes. And yes. it's going to be about how how we finish, how we finish off. I mean, granted, we saw, you know, some glimpses of the defense that we had last year, which is not the defense we have this year, you know, closing that game out against New England, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't know what this defense is gonna look like. So what I'm saying is we're playing. That's great, TD. I'm I'm glad you're a fortune teller. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the ball just don't go in your favor. What I'm saying is these games are gonna be a lot closer than what we think. You yeah. know what I mean? Other than other than Jacksonville, yeah. other than Jacksonville, these games are I see a lot of these games being close, and who knows what happens. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just I'm just trying I'm just trying to be realistic. <laughs> I'm just trying to be realistic. Y'all acting like y'all acting like boom, we <laughs> yeah, let me just go go in here and steamroll the team. I think it's gonna be hard fall. I think this defense is going to be good, but at the end of the day. W. How, how do how do we defend home? How do we close out games? Do we go out oh, we, and like do we go out like we used to play up the competition and play down the competition? You feel me? This team, I love the culture that we are establishing with with Flores, and it's a different mindset and a different culture, and I respect that and I love that. But at the end of the day, we still have a young offensive line. There's a lot of question marks for so for me right now. Speaking objectively at this point, like this point, like not seeing anything, just going into this blind, I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. Now, after training camp and the preseason, come holla at me. Oh, wait a minute. I will. We talk about week nine. We talk about week nine, the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> 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 TD. Listen. TD. Yes, sir. 
I will say this though. I forgot we do have to add an X factor in there. The X factor. X. No, it's not X. <laughs> it's Jordan Phillips. Remember, Jordan mm. Phillips went to Arizona. That's what we and I'm telling you, when he plays against Miami, that's a different player altogether. And we're going to be seeing him against in Arizona. When he I said we're going to have three losses on the road. This might be one of them. Hey, Donald. Yes. <laughs> Jordan Phillips. Bah. Bah. He writes everybody off, man. Hey, listen, y'all, like this, is, this is week nine. Fitz, Fitz magic. Now, even if it's oh, Fitz magic, listen, I'm not. Hey, listen, y'all going to get mad at me about this. But I'm not gonna talk about week ten and the and twelve. I'm not talking about week ten and twelve, okay? Because <laughs> it ain't nothing but more blah, okay? <laughs> if, if if we don't sweep the Jets, <laughs> I'm speaking. <laughs> we better well, sweep the Jets. Now this is weird the way that they set up the schedule. Now yeah, they got yeah. us playing the Jets at home, which I like. But then they got a buy, and then we play the Jets again right after. That is the weirdest thing I have ever seen playing the same team two though. times in a row. Not like takeover people. That's good because at the very least, you get a buy late, and you get a buy before a divisional game. Yes. So you have the opportunity to prepare, and and whatever the results were, whether or not. Your defense made a few mistakes, or your offense made a few mistakes. You have the opportunity to have fresh film from not only the last time you played them, but also the, the week prior, because you get that you get the, the the last three games that a team played, you get the film from. So you mm -hmm. actually see up to date stuff, and you have fresh experience for playing them as well. So mm -hmm. that is a good thing to have it. I mean, it's unique, but it's it's good. And the good and thing I'll, about it is we're we're home for the first game, right? And then we go, then we get a bye week to study the film of what we did good to kick their behind, and then think about what they're going to try to do to counter what we did to beat their behind, and then hit them upside the head with a whole new game plan through the bye week when we go on the road. That's two W's to be. And now I already know, hey, this is Adam Gates and Matt Burke. If you – listen. No, not Matt Burke, but y'all get my point. This is Adam Gates. I just attach them to every chance I get. This is Adam Gates. <laughs> this is Adam Gates. I don't care if you think we're going to lose the game. You better say we're going to win out your mouth. <laughs> this is Adam Gates. <laughs> that bum of all bums, man, I can't stand Adam Gates. He hurt my feelings. I have faith in this man. Listen, and he got coaches around here sniffing stuff. And well, let me stop. Listen, I'm, I'm I'm gonna put it like this: week week twelve at the Jets. I think I think we're gonna put a hurting on the Jets. Something different. There you go, Fitz. Just, just because how the game ended last year with that yeah. bogus pass interference call that they reviewed, which is not non reviewable this year. You can't review pass interferences this year. Like how you ain't gonna call it? But then go check it. Like, come, we're not gonna go there. That's the ref. But I think going into that game, Flo, you saw how irate he was after that game. I think Flo is going to go into MetLife and put his foot up, you know what, and then be like, all right, we're going back home. And that's a homecoming for Flo. It's gonna be something. It's gonna be something different. I think he really is going to want to embarrass the Jets. And that's he's home for him. Family up there. He's from he's from Brooklyn, New York. So he's yeah. gonna want to put on a good performance in New York. Two W's. Yeah. We that game. The Jets. And, and we're the actually going to score a touchdown this time. Yay! Yes. How about that? How about yes. actually scoring a touchdown without it we're being going, called back for a penalty? Yeah. Huh? Without it being called back for a penalty. To me, in my eyes, I see you got four weeks where you can. Well, you basically are preparing for the for the biggest game of the year in Kansas City. You should be rolling. Those those four weeks should get you prepared between the two Jet games and the Bengals game. You should be priming yourself 
for that game in, uh, with Kansas City. Now you bring up a good point, Dwayne, because uh, just if the if the, the way we have the fans right now, this could be one of the earliest times in which the fans could actually claim a playoff berth. And because right now, if you keep keep this in mind, with our two early uh, division games that we played against Buffalo and uh, New England week one and two, we could be 2-0 and in the division until when we see the Jets. Yeah. We could actually be either 3-3-1 three, three and one or 4-0 and oh after yeah. playing them. So this will actually make a determination as to if we win the division because then you see late, that's when we begin to play those two teams again late in the season to make yeah. a determination for the division. But, I mean, well, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not worried about the division at this point because we already 10-1, and one, um, ladies and gentlemen. We already won the division in my eyes. So, <laughs> but, but, but week 11, but week 11, I love that we finally get a bye week late. I yeah, love right. that we yeah. finally get a late bye week. That is rare for us. It's week four, week five, week six, week seven. Every year, now we got the back end of it when we done beat up on everybody, and we come back and we beat the Jets, and then week 13, we got Cincinnati Bengals at home. Let's make this quick and easy. Don't, we mm-hmm. should be arguing. Who wins Bengals-Dolphins at home? Dolphins. Dolphins. Ben Sandy, don't play with me. <laughs> Don't play with me, Finn Sandy. I don't care nothing about no well, – what's his name, the new quarterback, Barrow. the number one overall pick. Barrow. I don't care nothing about that guy. Listen, yeah. um, listen. at the end of the day, this game, stop Joe Mixon, you win. Easy. But, but TD, let me at least say this much. Now we'll find out what kind of coach we have as far as keeping our team focused. Because yeah. you don't want them looking past into the following week when you got to play Kansas City. Those next two games after that, we don't want our team to look past Cincinnati. We want them focused just on Cincinnati when we play in week 13, 14, and 15 to take care of itself. I'm and glad you, you said wanna, I'm- You don't want to blow those game, that game because after those three games, the Bengals, Chiefs, and Patriots – yeah, finished on the road, so you yes. want to be seven and one, eight no at home. Yes. You don't want to mess around. Listen, y'all stop playing these games now. The Chiefs Listen. gonna win. The Chiefs got the W. Um, and, and late in the season, because I think this young team, all these little kids that we have, they're young, they're gonna get ahead of themselves, they're gonna be feeling so good about being what 10 and one they're gonna fall to the chiefs they're gonna take the l but they're gonna learn a lesson because we're gonna face them in the playoffs and we're gonna beat them to go to the super bowl but i'm going too far here i'm going too far here i'm going too far here, <laughs> far here. but the, but y'all think we're gonna beat the chiefs at home why not here we go why not and, 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 and let me say it this way I will, I will just go by from what I've seen from Kansas City. This could be a point where it's both Kansas City and Miami in there if they have locked up playoff berths. Because basically if the records are the way that they are, hey, will Kansas City be the point where they're in, in the lead, where they can lead their division? No, nah, not in risk? 14. Not in week 14. You ain't can there I, yet. All right. Something? Well, if you're not then in seeing Mahomes, this is where it comes down if we can play them, if we can play our game of football at home, because they may not be looking at whether or not they can actually win this game or not, since it's an away game and it's, it's not in uh, Arrowhead. So we can win this game, but I think for the most part, I think they're a better team right now until we yeah, get everybody th- together. I think they win, and I think it's a humbling moment. What's your thoughts, Dwayne? I think that <clears> – <throat> That's one that will be a learning experience. I think Mm -hmm. that you will have a good gauge as to whether or not at this point in time the Dolphins can win a playoff game if they can uh, be within seven in a loss. If they get blown out by by more than 13 points, then – 
you know we got trouble with respect to whether we're going to win a playoff game in the new format. But if they stay close in this game against Kansas City, they got a good chance of winning and going to the divisional playoff round if they don't if they don't have home field advantage. But let's just take it like they win a division and they got to play in the first round of the playoff. Mm. If they stay close to Kansas City in this game, then I'm saying that we got a shot at seeing them again. That's what you want. That's what you yeah. want, especially in the first year. You want a shot at being number one. All you ask for is a shot because yeah. anything can happen on any given Sunday. But this game will tell you if they're going to legitimately have that chance at having that shot. Mm. Interesting. So uh, and so, do we all say W or L? I got an L. I got to give it an L. Fandom says win, but I got to give it an L. If they say it, you ain't say it anything. <laughs> Listen, I mean this. This is going to be um. This is going to be a very interesting game because you get Flores's yeah Flores's defensive mind. And genius, kind of against Andy Reid's superb genius. Yes. And if there's one thing that um, Andy Reid can do, is he can draw up some plays off the fly. It, it ain't nothing for him to be like, okay, I see this going. This is how we're going to counter that. I think what it comes down to, uh, it will be a loss, but like, like hmm, I think it will. Mm, well, Saturday, can I ask it, you it, 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 there's, a, there's so many variables because you got Travis Kelsey, you got Tyreek Hill, you got McCoy so Hardman, on, you on, got Sammy Watkins. There's variables in this game, but you think that the, the, the Cardinals going to be tough. Huh? What? what you you saying that this one is a, uh, it's hard for you, but the Cardinals are supposed to be tough too? Uh, first of all. This is why I say we run all over the Cardinals. But we not. back to the Chiefs. We will. It's going to be close. Um, the reason why I said the whoever Cardinals has points, be tough I'm taking whoever. I'm not taking because, whoever has points. Not game. What? But huh? The reason the reason why I said that the Cardinals game would be tough and could be possibly be an L is because you're coming off you're coming off of a win against the Rams and you're looking forward to that that divisional foe with the Jets. It's that in between game, that game that can bite you in the in the bum bum. So that's why I said it was difficult. That's a difficult game. The KC game, there's there's no sandwich in it. You 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 you're gonna be even now. I would say you're gonna be at least a six point underdog to the Chiefs. So that's why I said oh, if you can yeah. if you can if you can beat the spread and or keep it real close, then that's the point where you say you got a legitimate shot at getting to AFC Championship. AFC Championship game. So is it but, trying to say at the end of the day? So but, somebody <laughs> said somebody said um somebody said um the Jets have the same buy as us. What does the the reason why we have the advantage is they have to come on the road first. The buy at the same time um they they're the ones we get that home first. At least we the bye gives us more time to prepare for the road game, so it doesn't seem like an issue. Let's move forward, guys, because we're running out of time. Let's go Patriots at home, week fifteen, December twentieth. We ain't worrying about the cold weather, the the freezing up there. That's a beat down. That's a yeah. beat down. Please a tell me that's a Monday cold. night game. Nah, we don't have any Monday night games. Nope. I think I think Jets and Patriots have a Monday night game though. But this, so what we, we, don't what we got on the Patriots? That's a win. That, that's a beat down win. And just remember this: depending on how the schedules go, don't the don't the broadcast leagues have the flexibility to flex a game from a regular regular time slot to a prime time yeah. game? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that KC that KC Miami game, if things go the way we're calling it. Could be a prime time game. Good. Mm. I think the following week will be a prime time game. Y'all give me our prediction on the Patriots game in week 15. Win. Dolphins. Big, 
<laughs> um, we should win. If their roster stays the same, we should win. I think I think their defense will be a lot better by then, just because of who Belichick is. But we should win. Let me put my W on my paper. Miami, of Miami yeah, Dolphins. That doesn't about time. To, we're about to sweep the New England Patriots, and then we got to go on the road to the Raiders. What y'all think about that one? Loss. Loss for the Dolphins at the new stadium in Vegas. That'll be the first time they're there. Young kids. Uh, I, let me let me let me straighten this up, y'all. All right, so what y'all think about it? <laughs> First of all, we ain't never been afraid of Derek Carr or Marcus Mariota, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm not but that's the new black hole there, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Listen, ain't nobody worried about no nah. Raiders. They just like the freaking Cardinals to me. At the end of the oh, day, after, I don't know if I tell you what they, to me, that, those two teams seem so much alike to me, both of them. And right, and now, that's why they both gonna take a uh, L. <laughs> that it's a road game. Like I said, we have to go out to the West Coast. It'll be a short, short that. week. I that's the reason why I go ahead and give that as a loss on that one. I say no more what, than three losses on the what, road. What date is it? What date is, is it? Is they it don't December know yet. Morning? They don't. Oh, okay. Okay, they don't right. know yet. It's either right. going to be a Saturday or a Sunday. They're undecided and they don't mm. know the time yet either. Okay. So we'll see. I got it a W. Um, Donald got it a loss. Fin Sanity, what you got? That's a win. <laughs> Dwayne? Man, I want to say saw... a win bad. I want to say don't... a win badly, but. Don't know, but. Dwayne, you saw what they were without Josh Jacobs last year. Nothing. So what have get... they done? What have gonna, they done to show me that they're going to be more than Josh Jacobs this year with Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota? Nah, nah. There, there is no justification for us not coming out with a win against yep. that team. No. Now, Fitz Sanity feeling no. the spirit. We ain't okay. never been afraid of Derek Carr. We, you done seen what we done did to Derek Carr. What, what does X do to Derek Carr? Yeah, but Come if they, on, don't do that. Don't. If and they were playing Marcus in Miami. Mariota, if they were playing in Miami, I would say yes. Don't do that. But I tell you what, Fins Sanity, only thing I will say is this. Traditionally, especially with the Fins, when the Fins have a late West Coast game late in the season, they do not do well. And this is one of those in which I say it's too late in the season. This is one of those I can see them losing. That's just me. That's just me. I hope it's a win. I'm praying it's a win. The only thing I'm saying – to respond to it, Sandy, they they did draft Henry Ruggs. Mm. They did draft uh, nah. Adam, and they nah. did draft Ryan Edwards. So nah. they got they got some wide receivers now. Yeah, and but, we got, and we got but um, again, that's another that's another test of the secondary. Um, yes, you got I, I really want to give it a W. But I'm gonna give it an L. Twenty four ten. I got an L. So let's go with this last game because we're coming up on the nine forty five hour. That was when we were supposed to end. Um, Buffalo at home. We got not. I mean, Buffalo on the road from Miami. We got to travel. What y'all think? (sighs) I want to sweep Buffalo, so I'm gonna be rooting for a W, irregardless. (laughs) Yeah, I'm rooting for a W, but I got to – I'm rooting for a W, but I said if they lose in the division, this will be the game they lose. Listen, li- listen, let me let me go ahead and get mine out of the way. TD has an L. We're going to lose the Buffalo the last game of the season because we're going to be we're gonna be 13-2 and two at the time, and we're going to sit there and we're going to be like, nobody can catch us. We already got a first-round bye. Wait, are there any first round buys yet? Yeah, we're gonna be the best team yeah. in the league. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna have a first round buy. We're gonna be like, put the put the reserves in, man. <laughs> go ahead and move some of the practice squad guys up. Let's do whatever we gotta do. Cause we're gonna get some rest for the playoffs. And that's why Buffalo gonna beat us. I think they're gonna beat us on the road anyway, even if we were struggling at the late in the season. I don't like that game. Cold weather. Um, I don't like that game. 
I don't like that being the very last game of the season on the road with a formidable team. That's why I know we're going to beat them early in the season, but I don't like it late in the season. Um, I think we take the L. We have to take care of business and win at least two of those last three games at home. We have to win two, if not all three of those games at home, because you don't want it to where that Buffalo game determines a seed or determines a the division. Mm-hmm. And they'll but be, the they'll be freezing. Determine the seed anyway because it's an AFC opponent. Yeah, listen. Yeah, it could, it could unless, unless, somebody- now, if y'all if we thirteen and two, like y'all predict, then it won't have an effect on it. But like, I don't see us being thirteen and two. Well, if we, so if it we, will affect the seed. If, if losing the Buffalo means that we're we don't get a buy and we're not the number one seed because now again you got to remember two, three, four, five, six, and seven don't get a buy. Only the number one seed gets a buy. Right. The Miami <laughs> Dolphins. So the Miami maybe Dolphins. Kansas City, maybe Kansas City is thirteen and two as well. Nah, it ain't happening. Uh, Miami City's Dolphins and two, and we already and we already lost to them as y'all as. As far as I, I care. Know. As far as I care, it doesn't matter to me because even if we end the season 13 and 3, we're gonna have home games all the way until the AFC championship, maybe, and that might even be a home game, just depending on who the number one seed is. Um, but that's my record prediction based off of this schedule and the way things are lined up. The Miami Dolphins go 13 and 3, ladies and gentlemen. I already know everybody gonna say, uh, that's just being a homer, this and that. Sit back. Watch, get your popcorn, get ready for a spectacular <laughs> show every single week. Get ready for us to change the narrative about the Miami Dolphins. It's time for us to be the top of the totem pole, the top of the food chain. Dolphins, Dolphins, Dolphins. Fears like, up, baby. Fears I like up, the way the schedule broke down, especially giving us uh some some short travel days and and the and the buys. So it is a positive schedule. It's a it's a fin friendly schedule, a very fin friendly schedule. Now we just got to go out there and coach it and play it. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I don't see it. Let, let's get y'all last crazy. thoughts. Let's get y'all last <laughs> thoughts on the schedule before we get out of here. Um, Donald, what's your last thoughts, man? My last thoughts is are is that you're right. This is a fin friendly schedule. Tough opponents, but fin friendly. I have us going 12 and 4 right now. Could be more, could be less. But I do believe as long as we see our coach, Brian Flores, lead those men in in the in the trenches, and we can show progression from last year and get decent quarterback play, as well as improvement on that O line as well as D line, the Dolphins will be in the conversation when it comes to the playoffs. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's just pray that injuries we stay injury free and that we can go in there and take care of our business for 2020 rest in peace don shula fins up fins up fins up fins up fin sanity why don't you talk to us tell us your last thoughts on the schedule <laughs> i'm about to lose a lot of listen at the end of the day um all i'm going to say is is that on paper, we look good. It has to come together. So I'm trying to be a little bit more realistic. A lot of people may not like um, that I have this, you know, losing more games than the other guys. But just because you look good on paper don't mean you're going to go out there and do it. Other teams look good on paper, too. At the end of the day, it's got to come down to winning. But um, if if we sweep the Jets and sweep the Patriots, um, we're going to be in prime position to possibly win our division. Um, it would be good to um, – get five or six wins in the division, something we haven't done in a, a very long time. Um, and that Buffalo game could be very important. I'm looking forward to the uh, MetLife takeover, even though it's going to be cold again. So, Jesus, that's not going to be fun. But um, I'm a season ticket holder now, guys. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I will be at a lot of the – I will be at probably all the home games, knowing myself. Um uh, listen, we got to play these games, and I think a lot of these teams, especially, are going to be better. It's going to be it's gonna be different. I If we had, like, our rookie OTAs and our regular OTAs and mini camps and, you know, training camp and all that, I would feel so much better. But we have a lot of, you know, new players on this team, and they got to get accustomed to each other. So 
it's going to take time. And that's just me being realistic. That's why I said a lot of these games, I think are going to be close, but at the end of the day, it depends on how we close out games. We can't be the same team that, you know, gives it away on the last drive. We got to be the team, you know, that stops the team on the last drive or goes out and gets it ourselves. And if we can show that we can do that, then congratulations. The Dolphins will be in the playoffs. If we can't, then see y'all in 2021. Nice, nice. Talk to us, Dwayne. What's your last thoughts? My last thoughts are at the low, low, the, the floor of this schedule, we should be no worse than 10 and 6. The high ceiling point is 13 and 3. Go Dolphins! Go Dolphins! Go Dolphins! <laughs> oh man, what a night, y'all. What a night. Let me get this off the screen. This is TD Fan Song, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans, guys. I really do believe 13 and 3, baby. I think it's going to jail from the beginning. And we got a favorable situation in the beginning with the roads versus the ways, the time we have to prepare. It's all coming together. I'm excited. I hope y'all excited. It's fins up no matter what, guys. Oh, man. Listen, and TD ain't drunk. Y'all in the comment section talk about TD drunk. He tipsy. He ain't drunk. There is a difference. All right. So, anywho, <laughs> listen, y'all. It ain't listen, we ain't got no time to be playing games anymore. All right. It, we, this is the new era. I know some of y'all stuck in the old the last 20 years, and that's why you're not optimistic at all. They've conditioned you to not be optimistic. The Miami Dolphins organization has conditioned you to not be optimistic. But I'm here to tell you a new day has arrived, and Coach Flores, I trust. And it's time for us to go into other people's home and dominate and then defend our own home. It is time for greatness to happen, ladies and gentlemen. We're not playing anymore. I don't care what none of y'all think. We ain't playing no more. It's fins up over everything. We're about to dominate the NFL one week at a time. We're about to jail for week one. We ain't playing with nobody. We ain't playing with nobody. It's fins up. Hard-nosed football. We going into places and smacking people in their mouth. We ain't playing. It's over. Fins up. Thank y'all for tuning in to TV Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. Put your fans up in the comment section before you get out of here. Make sure you hit that like button, and I will see y'all tomorrow, man. This is TD Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. I am out. Peace. We gone, man. <laughs>